Hello, Chip. Hello, hello.
ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ವೈಜ್ಞಾನಿಕ ಹಾಗೂ ಔದ್ಯೋಗಿಕ ಅನುಸಂಧಾನ ಪರಿಷತ್ತಿನ ಸ್ಥಾಪನಾ ದಿನ ಹಾಗೂ ವಿಶ್ವ ಆಹಾರ ದಿನಾಚರಣೆಯ ಶುಭಾಶಯಗಳು ಯಹ ಉಪಸ್ಥಿತ ಸಭಿ ಸಜ್ಜನಕ್ಕೂ ಸಿ ಎಸ್ ಐ ಆರ್ ಸ್ಥಾಪನಾ ದಿವಸ್ ಅವರು ವಿಶ್ವ ಖಾದ್ಯ ದಿವಸಕ್ಕೆ ಶುಭಕಾಮನಾ ಗುಡ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅ ವಾಮ್ ಗ್ರೀಟಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಏಯ್ಟಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಸಿ ಎಸ್ ಐ ಆರ್ ಫೌಂಡೇಶನ್ ಡೇ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಫುಡ್ ಡೇ ಡಿಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ವಿಸ್ ಚೀಫ್ ಗೆಸ್ಟ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಸಿ ವಾಸುದೇವಪ್ಪ ವೈಸ್ ಚಾನ್ಸಲರ್ ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಫುಡ್ ಟೆಕ್ನಾಲಜಿ ಎಂಟರ್ಪ್ರಿನರ್ಶಿಪ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮ್ಯಾನೇಜ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ನಿಫ್ಟಮ್ ಹರಿಯಾಣ ಗೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆನರ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಆರ್ ಕೆ ಲಾಬ್ ಸೀನಿಯರ್ ಜನರಲ್ ಮ್ಯಾನೇಜರ್ ಭಾರತೀಯ ರಿಸರ್ವ್ ಬ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ನೋಟ್ ಮುದ್ರಣ್ ಪ್ರೈವೇಟ್ ಲಿಮಿಟೆಡ್ ಮೈಸೂರು ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಶ್ರೀದೇವಿ ಅನ್ನಪೂರ್ಣ ಸಿಂಗ್ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ರಿಟೈರೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಟ್ ಕಲೀಗ್ಸ್ ಸ್ಟಾಫ್ ಇನ್ವೈಟೀಸ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡಿಯರ್ ಚಿಲ್ಡ್ರನ್ ಆನ್ ಬಿಹಾಫ್ ಆಫ್ ಸಿ ಎಸ್ ಐ ಆರ್ ಸಿ ಎಫ್ ಟಿ ಆರ್ ಐ ಐ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ಯು ಆಲ್ ಟು ಟು ಡೇಸ್ ಪ್ರೋಗ್ರಾಮ್ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಆರ್ಗನೈಸ್ಡ್ ಟು ಸೆಲೆಬ್ರೇಟ್ ಟು ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಡೇಸ್ ದ ಸಿ ಎಸ್ ಐ ಆರ್ ಫೌಂಡೇಶನ್ ಡೇ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಫುಡ್ ಡೇ ಮೇ ನಾವು ರಿಕ್ವೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಡಿಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ವಿಷ್ ಗೆಸ್ಟ್ ಟು ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಕಮ್ ಆನ್ ಟು ದ ಡಯಾಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಕ್ಯುಪೈ ದ ಡಿಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ವಿಷ್ ಚೇರ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ಸರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮ್ಯಾಮ್ Thank you, sir and ma'am. The Council of Scientific and Industrial Research, CSIR, one of the largest publicly funded R&D organization in the world, established to play a great role towards the promotion of scientific knowledge and boost industrialization and economic growth of the nation. And the World Food Day is observed annually to highlight the millions of people worldwide who cannot afford a healthy diet and need for a regular access to the nutritious food so these are the two important meaningful day for us to celebrate and recall how to solve the problem through science and innovations to begin the event may i invite ms anagapriya research scholar to invoke the almighty with her prayer song ಗಣನಾ ಗಣದೈವತಾಯ ಗಣಾಧ್ಯಕ್ಷಾ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಗುಣಶರೀರಾಯ ಗುಣಮಂಡಿತಾಯ ಗುಣೇಶಾನಾ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಗುಣಾತೀತಾಯ ಗುಣಾಧೀಶಾ ಗುಣಪ್ರವೇಷ್ಟಾ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಏಕದಂತಾಯ ವಕ್ರತುಂಡಾ ಗೌರೀತನಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಗಜೇಶಾ ಬಾಲಚಂದ್ರಾ ಶ್ರೀಗಣೇಶಾ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಗಾನಚತುರಾ ಗಾನಪ್ರಾಣಾ ಗಾನಾಂತರಾತ್ಮನೆ ಗಾನೋತ್ಸುಕಾಯ ಗಾನಮತ್ತಾಯ ಗಾನೋತ್ಸುಕ ಮನಸೆ ಗುರುಪೂಜಿತಾಯ ಗುರುದೇವತಾಯ ಗುರುಕುಲಸ್ಥಾಯ ಗುರು ವಿಕ್ರಮಾಯ ಗುಹ್ಯ ಪ್ರವರಾಯ ಗುರವೇ ಗುಣಗುರವೇ ಗುರು ದೈತ್ಯ ಕಲಾ ಕ್ಷೇತ್ರೇ ಗುರು ಧರ್ಮ ಸದಾರಾಧ್ಯಾಯ ಗುರು ಪುತ್ರ ಪರಿತ್ರಾತ್ರಿ ಗುರು ಪಾಖಂಡ ಖಂಡಕಾಯ ಗೀತ ಸಾರಾಯ ಗೀತ ತತ್ವಾಯ ಗೀತ ಗೋತ್ರಾಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಗೂಢಗುಲ್ಫಾಯ ಗಂಧಮತ್ತಾಯ ಗೋಜಯ ಪ್ರದಾಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಗುಣಾತೀತಾಯ ಗುಣಾಧೀಶಾ ಗುಣಪ್ರವೇಷ್ಟಾ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಏಕದಂತಾಯ ವಕ್ರತುಂಡಾ ಗೌರೀತನಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಗಜೇಶಾ ಬಾಲಚಂದ್ರಾ ಶ್ರೀಗಣೇಶಾ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಗ್ರಂಥಗೀತಾಯ ಗ್ರಂಥಗೇಯ ಗ್ರಂಥಾಂತರಾತ್ಮನೆ ಗೀತಲೀನಾಯ ಗೀತಾಶ್ರಯಾ ಗೀತವಾದ್ಯ ಪಡವೇ ಗೇಯಚರಿತಾಯ ಗಾಯಕವರಾಯ ಗಂಧರ್ವ ಪ್ರಿಯ ಕೃತೆ 
ಗಾಯಕಾಧೀನ ವಿಗ್ರಹಾಯ ಗಂಗಾ ಜಲ ಪ್ರಣಯವತಿ ಗೌರಿ ಸ್ತನಂದನಾಯ ಗೌರಿ ಹೃದಯ ನಂದನಾಯ ಗೌರಭಾನುಸುತಾಯ ಗೌರಿ ಗಣೇಶ್ವರಾಯ ಗೌರಿ ಪ್ರಣಯಾಯ ಗೌರಿ ಪ್ರವನಾಯ ಗೌರಭಾವಾಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಘೋಸಹಸ್ರಾಯ ಗೋವರ್ಧನಾಯ ಗೋಪ ಗೋಪಾಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಗುಣಾತೀತಾಯ ಗುಣಾಧೀಶಾಯ ಗುಣ ಪ್ರವಿಷ್ಟಾಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಏಕದಂತಾಯ ವಕ್ರತುಂಡಾಯ ಗೌರೀತನಯಾಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಗಜೇಶಾನಾಯ ಬಾಲಚಂದ್ರಾಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಗಣೇಶಾಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಏಕದಂತಾಯ ವಕ್ರತುಂಡಾಯ ಗೌರೀತನಯಾಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಗಜೇಶಾನಾಯ ಬಾಲಚಂದ್ರಾಯ ಶ್ರೀ ಗಣೇಶಾಯ ಧೀಮಹಿ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಅನಗ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಮೆಲೋಡಿಯಸ್ ರೆಂಡರಿಂಗ್ ಮೇ ನೌ ಇನ್ವೈಟ್ ಶ್ರೀಮತಿ ರಾಧಾರಮಣಿ ಪಿ ಪಿ ಎಸ್ ಸಿ ಎಸ್ ಐ ಆರ್ ಸಿ ಎಫ್ ಟಿ ಆರ್ ಐ ಟು ಫಾರ್ಮಲಿ ವೆಲ್ಕಮ್ ದ ಡಿಗ್ನಿಟರೀಸ್ ಎಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ಹೃತ್ಪೂರ್ವಕ ವಂದನೆಗಳು ಸಬ್ಕೋ ಸಿ ಎಸ್ ಐ ಆರ್ ಸ್ಥಾಪನಾ ದಿವಸ್ ಅವ್ರ ವಿಶ್ವ ಕಾರ್ಯ ದಿವಸ್ ಕಿ ಹಾರ್ದಿಕ್ ಶುಭಕಾಮನಾಯೇ ಎ ವಾಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಪ್ಲೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಗುಡ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಒನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಲ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಇಯರ್ ಹಾನರಬಲ್ ಚೀಫ್ ಗೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಡೇ ಗೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆನರ್ ಡೈರೆಕ್ಟರ್ ಮ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮೈ ಡಿಯರ್ ಕೊಲೀಗ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಯರ್ ಆ್ಯಸ್ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಪೂರ್ಣಿಮಾ ಸೆಟ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಸೆಲೆಬ್ರೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಏಯ್ಟಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಫೌಂಡೇಶನ್ ಡೇ ಆಫ್ ಅವರ್ ಸಿ ಎಸ್ ಐ ಆರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸೋ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ದಿ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಫುಡ್ ಡೇ ದಿ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಫುಡ್ ಡೇ ಇಸ್ ಸೆಲೆಬ್ರೇಟೆಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಯರ್ ವಿತ್ ದಿ ಥೀಮ್ ಲೀವ್ ನೋ ಒನ್ ಬಿಹೈಂಡ್ ಆನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಜಾಯಸ್ ಒಕೇಶನ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ರೀಮ್ಲಿ ಹ್ಯಾಪಿ to have with us an eminent personality dr chindi vasudev pasa as our chief guest for the day he is the vice chancellor of niftam haryana i request our director ma'am dr shri devi to welcome dr vasudev pasa with a bouquet please Sir, on behalf of the staff and students i welcome you sir to this function now i extend my hearty welcome to shri r k lab sir the guest of honor to this occasion he is the senior general manager of bharatiya reserve bank note mudran private limited mysore may I request our director ma'am to welcome shri lab sir with a bouquet I welcome you sir to this function. Now I request Ms Chanchala to welcome Shri PK Banerjee sir Deputy General Manager who is also from Bharatiya Reserve Bank who is present with us today on this gracious occasion with a bouquet. Thank you sir for being present with us today. Now the one who is a pillar of support and strength with a clear vision and passion entwined with novelty in all activities of the institute is none other than our director madam dr shri devi annapurna singh ma'am i request now chanchala ma'am to please welcome our director with a bouquet thank you ma'am It's my pleasure to bid a genuine welcome to all the support team and departments involved in organizing today's function with their esteemed presence. With immense admiration, I offer the most affable welcome to all the staff in the auditorium who have come to support us with their valuable presence for this occasion. The superheroes, the future of our country, today's scholars, tomorrow's scientists, are our dear students a hearty welcome to all of you and also dr banerji to be present with us today on this auspicious occasion sir thank you very much sir we believe together with the theme of world food day that is leave no one behind 
let's all bind unite and walk together so that we can achieve more once again i welcome you all to this function thank you thank you ma'am foundation day of an any organization is celebrated not only to acknowledge the achievements of that year but also set goals for the coming days and to make a sincere promise to achieve them and it is known that the theme of the world food day this year is leave no one behind it is a hardious task with no hope but with a hope to work towards it may i please request the dignitaries on the dais to light the lamp of sanguity please sir and i request everybody to kindly uh, stand for the csir anthem one and all may i now request dr r p singh chief scientist department of biochemistry csir cftri to kindly introduce the dignitaries on the dais to the gathering please सभी को मेरा नमस्कार ये कैसा अद्भुत संयोग है कि आज सी एस आई आर के स्थापना दिवस और विश्व खाद्य दिवस के अवसर पर मंच पर श्रीदेवी वासुदेव और लाभ एक साथ उपस्थित हैं और मेरा यह सौभाग्य है कि इन मान भावों का आपसे परिचय कराने का ए वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल ऑफ यू It's my pleasure and honor to introduce today's chief guest, Mukhya Tithi, Dr. C. Vasudeva Bappa to you. Dr. Vasudeva Bappa is presently working as Vice Chancellor of NIFTEM since July 2017. He was born in 1953 in Freedom Fighters Village, Isur, in Karnataka, which has made its name on national map as the only village in India to declare its independence in the year 1942. by forming their own government <laughs> Dr Vasudevappa completed his graduation in 1974 and post graduation in 1976 in fisheries sciences he had his phd from central marine fisheries research institute cochin he initially worked as extension specialist in karnataka government with a focus on promotion of aquaculture technology amongst the farming community for 6 years He worked as junior and senior fisheries scientist and chief scientific officer in UAS Bangalore for 26 years as dean of post graduate studies in US Bangalore for one and a half years he reformed the post graduate education with proactive policies automation of exam systems and other activities he operated more than 10 national and two international projects he worked as senior executive director and chief executive of NF DB Hyderabad Government of India for 5 years and made efforts on transfer of technology of specific pathogen free shrimp seeds and establishment of multiple multiplication centers he served as the member of committee formed by the planning commission to prepare 11th plan policy document for fisheries development in the country he served as chairman and member of RAC research advisory council for three ICR institutes 
Academic Council Member of CIFI, Chairman QRT for CIFRI Barakpur. He is serving as a member of scientific community of FSACI and member of the governing council of EIN NABI. He served as first vice chancellor of the newly formed University of Agriculture and Horticulture Science, say Shimoga, Karnataka, and was responsible for establishing new university campus. He created a new and vibrant face to the university system in terms of infrastructure, academic programs, technology, farm development, etc. He is responsible for the release of two varieties, each of groundnut, castor, onion, and one fish variety by providing strong research support for it. At NIFTEM, he established contract research on the organization. NIFTEM policies were recognized, reorganized with reference to deemed to be university guidelines by framing policy documents with regards to the recruitment and procurement, library, PG, UG, and PhD guidelines, startup policies, faculty and student research, research policies, etc. Giving lead to the capacity building program of PMFME scheme based on the one district, one product concept of Honorable Prime Minister of India. He also established a capacity building center at Patna and is in the process of establishing a regional center of NIFTEM at Hajipur, Bihar. He established NIFTEM Technology Innovation and Business Incubation Foundation, NTIBIF, to give comprehensive training for startups. He established a state of art incubation facility for ready to eat food products, bakery technology, bakery technology business incubation center, cold chain development school, bio nanotechnology lab, center of excellence on food fortification, automation of examination system with proctoring and digital library with national access. An excellent food testing lab was also established, which has integrated accreditation and rec recognized as a referral laboratory by FSSAI. He served as the chairman of Lab Research Council, LRC, of DFRL Mysore. Under his leadership, focus on research through collaboration with 24 national and 14 international organizations or institutions is also given a lot of impetus. NIFTEM was rated as the platinum rated green building and received Swakch Campus Ranking Award from Ministry of HRD, Human Research Development. Karnataka Science and Technology Academy, Department of Science and Technology, Government of Karnataka, conferred Science Fellowship in January 2022 to Dr. Vasudevapa. He received Young Scientist Award and Best Extension Worker Award in 1987, Certificate of Excellence from Global Food Chain Alliance from Danfoss, and Dr. J.S. Pruthi Memorial Award from All India Food Preservers Association, and recently he received prestigious Karnataka Rajyotsava Award in 2020 for Science and Technology. He has put in about 47 years of service as outreach researcher, academic development administrator, and academician during the period. He also visited 14 countries during his uh, tenure till today. Under his, lead his leadership, NIFTEM has been rewarded with recognition of institution of national importance by the Act of Parliament. He has published 74 research papers and several book chapters, bulletins, manuals, action plans, etc., in the area of fisheries and aquaculture member of Aquaculture. He is also a member of eight professional bodies and reviewer of three international journals. It's my pleasure to welcome you on the dais today, sir. Thank you. Ab mera sohag hai ki aaj ke sammani sammani nahi aati thi. Guest of honor, Sri Ramesh Kumar Lab, R K Lab, sir, to introduce karne ka. Mr. Lab is a senior general manager at Bharatiya Reserve Bank Note Mudran Private Limited, Mysore. He has a vast experience of 32 years working in public sectors in the areas of machine tools, engineering and printing industries, production, operations, operations management, corporate planning, inspection, maintenance, industrial engineering, and root cause analysis. Currently, he is working as a plant head of Bharatiya Reserve Bank, Note Mudran Limited, Mysore. As far as education is concerned, he has initial education from St. Javier's College, Rachi, B. Mechanical Engineering from Mujaffarpur Institute of Technology, and postgraduate diploma in computer uh, applications from Punjab University. He has vast experience as far as uh, public sector is concerned. He was assistant manager in HMT Limited Pinjor Chandigarh for more than 17 years, hydraulics and power line division of BML at Kolar Gold Fields, Karnataka for more than four years. Matlab sir, you have to note that 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 you have to note that
He was Deputy General Manager of Bharti Reserve Bank Note Mudran Private Limited, Bangalore for four years, and presently he is Senior General Manager and heading the, uh, the unit chief in Bharti Reserve Bank Note Mudran Private Limited, Mysore, since 2018. He is in charge of both printing press and ink manufacturing units. For the current information of the audience, the one third of the currency of the country is printed in Mysore. During demonetization period, he has played an active role in printing as well as distribution of currencies all over the country. Sri Lab has visited various paper mills, banknote productions, and banknote manufacturing units, and has also attended various currency conferences in India and abroad. It's my pleasure to welcome you to this function, sir. Manch par upaste tisri mahan bhav, Dr. Shri Devya Napurna Singh, jo ki hamari nideshak, she is director of CRCFTRI Mysore. She is an eminent food technologist and active researcher and has taken over as director of CSRCFTRI in January 2021 after post graduation from this institute. From CSRCFTRI in 1988, she worked in with Kisan Products Limited, Bangalore for a short stint and returned to CFTRI in 1991. She grew up to the position of chief scientist and head of the Department of Protein Chemistry and Technology and before moving to the position of director. She received her doctoral degree in food science. During 1996-98, she had been with the Institute of Microbiology, Hanover, Germany for that fellowship. In her career of more than three decades, she worked extensively on both basic and applied aspects of food science and made significant contributions towards protein unfolding, structure function activity, relationship, protein and enzymes as food ingredients, nutraceuticals from traditional food and technologies for combating malnutrition. Some of the technologies that, have, that are transferred to industry include amylase-rich energy food, soya protein hydrolyzates, heat-resistant sesam seeds, and supplementary food for severely malnourished children. Over 40 entrepreneurs have taken these technologies so far. During 12th five-year plan, she was the principal investigator of the wellness food product project in which an array of innovative products were brought out which are targeted to every section of the society. Further, a, plant, a pilot level malnutrition intervention study was undertaken during the same period with the participation of over 200 Anganwadi children in order to assess the efficacy of supplementary foods developed by CFTRI. She has published more than 50 research papers in peer reviewed journals and holds 11 patents out of that five are US patents. Dr. Sri Devi has guided six students for, her doctoral, for their doctoral thesis along with 40 postgraduate students also. Currently, her research focus is on the alternate and unconventional sources of proteins and micronutrients to combat malnutrition and development of novel food ingredients for health benefits. A gold medalist for her graduation from University of Mysore, Dr. Sri Devi has represented as Young Scientist Fellow, Hanover, Germany, in 2000, INF Craft Fellow, 2006, Indo-Finland Exchange Program, 2018, speaker in the Knowledge Summit at Lyon, France, 2019, and many more. Dr. Sri Devi is governing council member of National Agri Biotechnology Institute, NABI, member expert committee on public health and nutrition, BIS committee on packaged drinking water, FSSAI governing body, and board of studies of Mysore University. She's a task force chair, uh, chairperson for FSSAI Committee on Indian Mithais and Namkins. For a short duration, she was also holding the additional charge of directorship of CSIR NAL. She's also a recipient of honorable fellowship of Karnataka Science and Technology Academy, KSTA, for 2022. She's a life member of Association of Food Sciences, Scientists and Technologists, India, Society of Biological Chemists, Nutrition Society of India, Association of Microbiologists of India and many more. It's my pleasure to welcome you, madam, in this function. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. We have with us the perfect blend of food technologists and engineers to share their thoughts in the coming hours. And uh, may now request our director, Dr. Sri Devi Anapuna Singh, to share with us the importance of CSIR Foundation Day and World Food Day. Please, ma'am.
ಎಲ್ರಿಗೂ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಸಭಿ ಕೋ ಮೇರಾ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಸಿ ಎಸ್ ಸಿ ಆರ್ ಸ್ಥಾಪನಾ ದಿವಸ ಅವ್ರ ವಿಶ್ವ ಖಾದ್ಯ ದಿವಸ ಸಮಾರೋಹ ಪರ ಆಪ ಸಬಕೋ ಸ್ವಾಗತ ಹೈ ಚೀಫ್ ಗೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಟುಡೇ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಚಿಂಡಿ ವಾಸುದೇವಪ್ಪಾ ಜಿ ವೈಸ್ ಚಾನ್ಸಲರ್ ನಿಫ್ಟಮ್ ಗೆಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆನರ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಆರ್ ಕೆ ಲಾಬ್ ಸೀನಿಯರ್ ಜನರಲ್ ಮ್ಯಾನೇಜರ್ ಭಾರತೀಯ ರಿಸರ್ವ್ ಬ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ನೋಟ್ ಮುದ್ರನ್ ಪ್ರೈವೇಟ್ ಲಿಮಿಟೆಡ್ ಸ್ಪೆಷಲ್ ಇನ್ವೈಟ್ರಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಎಸ್ ಎಂ ಬ್ಯಾನರ್ಜಿ ಡೆಪ್ಯೂಟಿ ಜನರಲ್ ಮ್ಯಾನೇಜರ್ ಭಾರತೀಯ ರಿಸರ್ವ್ ಬ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ನೋಟ್ ಮುದ್ರನ್ ಪ್ರೈವೇಟ್ ಲಿಮಿಟೆಡ್ ಮೈಸೂರು ರಿಟೈರೀಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಆರ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಟ್ ಕೊಲೀಗ್ಸ್ ಸ್ಟೂಡೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಲೇಡೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಜೆಂಟಲ್ಮೆನ್ ಅ ವೆರಿ ಗುಡ್ ಮಾರ್ನಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು ಟುಡೇ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಸೆಲೆಬ್ರೇಟಿಂಗ್ ದ ಸಿ ಎಸ್ ಸಿ ಆರ್ ಫೌಂಡೇಶನ್ ಡೇ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಫುಡ್ ಡೇ ಟುಗೆದರ್ ಸಿ ಎಸ್ ಸಿ ಆರ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಕೌನ್ಸಿಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಸೈಂಟಿಫಿಕ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಂಡಸ್ಟ್ರಿಯಲ್ ರಿಸರ್ಚ್ ಆಸ್ ವಿ ಆಲ್ ನೋ ವಾಸ್ ಎಸ್ಟಾಬ್ಲಿಷ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ಟು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟುಡೇ ಇಸ್ ಏಯ್ಟಿ ಇಯರ್ಸ್ ಓಲ್ಡ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಫುಡ್ ಡೇ ಇಸ್ ಸೆಲೆಬ್ರೇಟೆಡ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ಇಯರ್ ಆನ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟೀನ್ ಅಕ್ಟೋಬರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಜಸ್ಟ್ ಆಸ್ ದ ಬರ್ತ್ ಡೇ ಇಸ್ ಸೆಲೆಬ್ರೇಟೆಡ್ ಆಫ್ಟರ್ ದ ಬರ್ತ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಚೈಲ್ಡ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಸೆಲೆಬ್ರೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಬೋತ್ ದೀಸ್ ಈವೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಟುಡೇ ವಿತ್ ಅ ಸ್ಲೈಟ್ ಡಿಲೇ ಕೌನ್ಸಿಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಸೈಂಟಿಫಿಕ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇಂಡಸ್ಟ್ರಿಯಲ್ ರಿಸರ್ಚ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಪ್ರೀಮಿಯರ್ ಇಂಡಸ್ಟ್ರಿಯಲ್ ಆರ್ ಎನ್ ಡಿ ಆರ್ಗನೈಜೇಷನ್ ಇನ್ ಇಂಡಿಯಾ ವಿಚ್ ವಾಸ್ ರೆಜಿಸ್ಟರ್ಡ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ದ ಸೊಸೈಟೀಸ್ ಆಕ್ಟ್ ಏಯ್ಟೀನ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಸಿ ಎಸ್ ಸಿ ಆರ್ ವಾಸ್ ಎಸ್ಟಾಬ್ಲಿಷ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಫಾರ್ಟಿ ಟು ಸೆವರಲ್ ವೆಂಚರ್ಸ್ ವೆರ್ ರೆಸ್ಪಾನ್ಸಿಬಲ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಎಸ್ಟಾಬ್ಲಿಷ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಆರ್ಗನೈಜೇಷನ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ಲೂಡ್ಸ್ ರೀ ಇಂಜಿನಿಯರಿಂಗ್ ದ ಆರ್ಗನೈಜೇಷನಲ್ ಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ ಲಿಂಕಿಂಗ್ ರಿಸರ್ಚ್ ಟು ದ ಮಾರ್ಕೆಟ್ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ಮೊಬಿಲೈಸಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಆಪ್ಟಿಮೈಸಿಂಗ್ ದ ರಿಸೋರ್ಸ್ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ಕ್ರಿಯೇಟಿಂಗ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಎನೇಬ್ಲಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ಫ್ರಾಸ್ಟ್ರಕ್ಚರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಇನ್ವೆಸ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಹೈ ಕ್ವಾಲಿಟಿ ಸೈನ್ಸ್ ಸಿ ಎಸ್ ಸಿ ಆರ್ ವಾಸ್ ಎಂಟ್ರೆಂಚ್ಡ್ ವಿತ್ ಅನ್ ಓವರ್ ಆಲ್ ಮೋಟಿವ್ ಟು ಗಿವ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಸೆಕ್ಟರ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಕಂಟ್ರೀಸ್ ಎಕಾನಮಿ ಅ ಸೈಂಟಿಫಿಕ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟೆಕ್ನಾಲಜಿಕಲ್ ಬೇಸ್ ರೀಸೆಂಟ್ಲಿ ಇಟ್ ವಾಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಬೀ ರ್ಯಾಂಕ್ಡ್ ನೈನ್ಟೀನ್ ಅಮಾಂಗ್ ದ ಟಾಪ್ ತ್ರೀ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ತ್ರೀ ಗೌರ್ಮೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಷನ್ಸ್ ಅಕ್ರಾಸ್ ದ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಸ್ಕೈ ಮ್ಯಾಗೋ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಷನ್ಸ್ ರ್ಯಾಂಕಿಂಗ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ರಿಪೋರ್ಟ್ this organization csar has contributed to industrial competitiveness the welfare of society and advancing fundamental knowledge that will lead to the economic development of india our country with its 37 research laboratories this organization has been designed to promote all disciplines with good technical knowledge and innovating techniques it includes all the sectors of the indian economy like aerospace biotechnology chemicals drugs and pharmaceuticals energy information dissemination leather and metal minerals manufacturing and of course food and food processing some of the achievements that are really worth mentioning today there are many and i just restrict to a few include indelible ink which is actually produced in mysore our own city infant foods from buffalo milk shelf stable foods swaraj tractor crop friendly pesticides safe drinking water bamboo flowering in a very short time special glasses leather technology mission hansa and sarus aircrafts vegetable salt and many many more a few of the labs that are carrying out translational research primarily have also brought out path breaking uh, work in mapping of rivers prediction of natural disasters anti malarial drugs oral delivery of insulin cybrid facility for neuro degenerative diseases cost effective medical devices so on and so forth i can go on and on even during the covid time csr has played a very critical role and significant role in uh, providing solutions to the pandemic in our country conversion of light naphtha to lpg and gasoline low cost housing in disaster affected areas software capable of decoding protein sequences in genetic material of all living organisms and e journal consortium high dielectric constant materials for metal oxide semiconductors and devices and so on have also been part of the uh, path breaking research that has been carried out by csar there have been therefore many firsts and recently we have dr kalai selvi take over as the first women dg of
that range from food to aerospace to chemicals to road research, energy and environment, materials and minerals, CSAR has been providing many solutions to the country's problems. And we pride ourselves as one CSAR with one vision to enhance the quality of life of our citizens of India through innovative science and technology, globally competitive R&D, sustainable solutions, and capacity building to fulfill the dream of Atmanirbhar Bharat. Presently, CSAR's mission is to build a new CSAR that will fulfill the needs of modern and digital India. Some of the prime target sectors include smart agriculture for farmers, technical solution provider to industries, women empowerment, promotion of students and scholars as second line leaders, affordable health care, import substitution, indigenization and global benchmarking through supply chain management, hand holding of Indian industries of MSME, startups, incubation centers as well as centers of excellence. With eight themes, three outreach programs, CSAR is therefore poised to be the sustainable national leader for industry-relevant le science and technology for our country. CSAR CFTRA is of course one of the constituent labs under the aegis of CSAR, which was started in 1950 as one of the first la labs. The lab is, has been devoted to the research in the area of food science and technology. While many landmark technologies were developed, significant basic research has also been carried out. Many prototypes of traditional food machineries have been developed. Methodologies and testing methods have been adapted for food analysis in the country. And these activities over the past 70 plus years have helped the Indian food industry to thrive and expand. The, this institute has also provided trained manpower to the industry. And thanks to the recent pandemic, the importance of food and diet on health is well recognized. And the connect between diet, health, and immunity is on the minds of everybody. If a person is undernourished or deficient in essential nutrients or micronutrients, he or she is vulnerable to the disease. Thus, food, while recognized as a basic need, has attained a different ramification altogether in recent times. The World Food Day is observed annually on 16th October to highlight the millions of people worldwide who cannot afford a healthy diet and the need for regular access to nutritious food and its implications on the economy of the countries. The theme for 2022 is Leave No One Behind. In India, the recent Global Hunger Index report states that the country stands 107 out of 121 countries. With a score of 29.1, India has a level of hunger that is serious. And based on data from 2019 to 21, 16.3% of India's population is undernourished. The child wasting rate of India is around 19.3%, which is the highest of any country in the world. 828 million people suffer from undernourishment across the world, which was reported in 2021, and around 25% are in India. The GDP or gross domestic product has increased 4.5 times, and the per capita consumption of our country has increased three times. Even the food grain production has increased almost two times. Despite this phenomenal industrial and economic growth, and while India produces sufficient food to feed its population, it is unable to provide access to food to a large number of people, especially the vulnerable groups of women and children. Responding to this daunting challenge, the union government launched the Prime Minister's overarching scheme of holistic nutrition or Portion Abhiyan in 2018 with the allocation of more than 2,800 crore for three years beginning 2017 and 18 in the hope that we will be able to meet the sustainable development goal by 2022 of eliminating hunger. Our GDP is $3.46 trillion. However, around 4% of this, which is a huge number, is lost due to malnutrition. 
Globally, also 36% of the deaths and 42% of the disability adjusted life years are due to communicable maternal, perinatal and nutritional disorders. Two thirds of the deaths in children under five in India are still attributed to malnutrition. Therefore, the celebration and solutions that can come out of these celebrations of the World Food Day are very, very important and significant. And definitely from these figures, we understand that India can never be left behind if the world has to attain the status of being hunger free. Today, we have the good fortune of having uh, Dr. Chindi Vasudevapa, Vice Chancellor of NIFTEM with us as our chief guest. His knowledge and expertise would help us all to collectively address the problems that face us in the area of food science, nutrition, and technology. Our guest of honor, Sri Lab, Senior General Manager of Bharti Reserve Bank, Note Mudra and Private Limited, is well experienced with all machines and their working. And I'm sure we will all be very eager to listen to their views today on the occasion of the celebration of these two important events, the Foundation Day of CSCR and the World Food Day. Thank you all. Jai Hind. Thank you, ma'am. In a nutshell, CSIR has touched upon every aspect of science and technology and found various solutions to the problems of the nation for the benefit of the society. Though the number of hunger index, malnutrition of the child and the women are alarming, leave no behind seems to be far-fetched. However, it's worth a struggle to achieve a meaningful milestone. On the occasion of CSIR Foundation Day, CSIR CFTRI conducts various competitions to the children of the CFTRI family. May I now invite Sri Satyendra Rao, Chief Scientist and Chairman, Competition Committee, to kindly announce the winners of the various competition. I request the guest of honor, Sri R. K. Labji, to kindly give away the prizes, and I also request the Chief Guest and the Directors to kindly join him. And I invite all the students to please come over the dais and take over the prizes. Hello, Namaskara. Hello, Namaskara. Good morning. Tumba in the Makal Kaitadro. Osha or Apa Manga or the third Kula de Castagi to the Canada. Okay. Happy uh, CSAR Foundation Day. Happy World Food Day to all of you, both belated though. As always, to mark the CSAR Foundation Day, competitions were conducted for the children of the staff members from LKG to 12th standard. I think you can see the LKG starting. Competitions were conducted on 17 September at CFTRI school. Totally about 100 students enrolled, and 43 of them have got the prizes. I shall be announcing the list of prize winners of the competitions that mark the 81st Foundation Day of CSAR. I'll start with LKG. LKG first prize, Rajat Yes. Son of Shivamalapa VM Health Center. Our Ilde Hodre, Shivamalapa Ilde Hodre, somebody from Health Center can come and collect the award. I think that can continue. So it could still be Parents' Day out. <laughs> Shivamalapa or Parvagi. You all are drawing competitions with LKG, UKG. Second prize, LKG, M. Arfan, son of Muhammad Shaib. Sorry.
थर्ड प्राइज एल के जी जी भव्या प्रकालिया डाटर ऑफ पी उमा महेश्वरी एफ एस एंड एक्यू सी आर एस्ट के जी इधर गोतिल नेक्स्ट यु के जी फस्ट प्राइज के एन निहांत भरद्वाज सन ऑफ के नारायण ई एंड एम एम निहान भरद्वाज पुट युअर हैंड्स टुगेदर निहान भरद्वाज यू के जी ड्रॉइंग फर्स्ट प्राइज सेकेंड प्राइज लेखना चंद्रा पी डाटर ऑफ प्रदीप आर एफ एंड एपड़ ना नो लेखना चंद्रा सारी सन सन ऑफ थर्ड प्राइज ध्रुवीन सिंह सन ऑफ काव्यश्री एल ऑफ ई टू ध्रुवीन सिंह सिंह तर बरिया एल के जी यू के जी मकल फोटो तक यू कैन जस्ट कॉल आल दे मेन एंड हैव ए ग्रूप फोटो और तुम वे जाते निंत कष्ट अंत कहते हैं एल के जी यू के जी आते थैंक यू मूविंग आन फर्स्ट स्टैंडर्ड फर्स्ट प्राइज ध्रुव एस सन ऑफ एस शिवकुमार सी आर स्टोसन पर्चे ध्रुव एस सेकेंड प्राइज प्रखर जोशी सन ऑफ डॉक्टर श्रुति पांडे This is Prakhar Joshi, son of Dr. Shruti Pandey of GST. Third prize to Sugata, son of J.R. Manjunath CFS. Sugata. Now I call upon prize winners from second standard. फर्स्ट प्राइज टू तेजस पाटिल के सन ऑफ डॉक्टर नीलकंठेश्वर पाटिल एम एफ टी तेजस पाटिल सेकेंड प्राइज टू अर्जुन विक्रम नंबियार सन ऑफ डॉक्टर सिंधु आर नंबियार ऑफ एफ एस एंड एक्यू सी एल and uh, in the second standard third prize is shared and uh, we are rangapriya daughter vk ravi finance and accounts ravi can come and collect the award father on behalf of daughter another third prize to parnika lakshmikan daughter of dr punima priyadarshini cg molecular nutrition parnika lakshmikan now the third standard first prize goes to samant v son of vital rao agri hati samarth samarth work made dikke second prize to rutvika ayan daughter of navin kumar av health center third prize to wasfia anjum daughter of mohammad shakib gst third prize to wasfia next is fourth standard first prize to kavin ap son of arun kumar pandil selvam of fpt okay group photo okay fine fine sorry first standard second standard third standard
collectively a group photo. First, second, and third standards. Thank you. Now I call upon the fourth standard. The first prize there goes to Kavin AP, son of Arun Kumar Pannir Selvam, FPT. Father? No. Anybody? Okay. Then the second prize to Hardit Joshi, son of Shruti Pandey, GST. Third prize goes to E. Pragati Darshini, daughter of S. Edil Vendam. Pragati Darshini. Fifth standard, Aryan Nidhi Kamayanda, son of Dr. Usha Kiran K.A. of E5. Aryan. Second prize goes to Karthik R, son of Ravi Kumar C of Stosen Purchase. Third prize to Niharika Lakshmi Khan, daughter of Dr. Purnima Priyadarshini C G Molecular Nutrition. Money or Yarder Prize Kodangilang Madbeka next. Sixth standard, Janhavi J. Gore, daughter of Vijayalakshmi J. Rao of E1 and E5. Sixth standard, second prize, Siddharth Maurya S., yes, son of Jyoti K., ITS and CS. Bandila? Okay. Third prize goes to Lishita Lokesh, daughter of Lokesh C., CIFS. Okay, we move on to seventh standard. First prize to Chirant Yes, son of Dr. Sridhar RV, PCBT. Chirant. Bandela. Second prize to KH, Vishruta Prashant, daughter of Dr. KV Harish Prashant, Biochemistry. Third prize goes to Indrajit Kalyan, son of Dr. Uma Manjapara of Biochemistry. So your like classical biochemistry or male guy. Pragis Kotoria, one Nimsha, Usruta Valatara, Madi, Elargo, Inonsala, Vatagi, one photo. Certificate it will make another certificate. Ah, get go. Thank you. So we move forward with uh, eighth standard. First prize, I mean, the, these are quizzes actually, I mean, the written quiz. And the first prize goes to Deepashri S, daughter of Sanjay Lal KP of ITS and CS. Deepashri S. Second prize to Vaishnavi J. Rao, daughter of Pooja J. Rao, PPSFT. Seems she is not there. Third prize goes to Shravya H. Rao, Dr. Divya MV of Finance and Accounts. Please, please put your hands together. I think it's the motivation for the next generation. Next, ninth standard. First prize goes to K. Sriniti, daughter of Dr. B. Kumar, PMC. Welcome.
second prize to Srinidhi B.M., son of Bhavani Ishwaran of CIFS. Srinidhi, sorry, sorry. Third prize to Sudarshana J. Rao, son of Dr. Pooja J. Rao, PPSFT. Not there, okay. Tenth standard, first prize to R. Jeevita, daughter of uh, Dr. Swaruparani, MFT. Jeevita. Second prize to Gnanavar Dhini N, daughter of Naveen Kumar, CFE and MM. Third prize goes to Grishma J. Gore, daughter of Vijayalakshmi J. Rav, E1 and E5. Grishma. So we have uh, another six prizes left. First PUC of the 11th standard. First prize to KH, KH Urvish Prashant, son of Dr. K.V. Harish Prashant, Biochemistry. Urvish Prashant. Second prize in first PUC goes to Ms. Uh, H. Radha Hebbar, Dr. of Dr. H. Umesh Hebbar of Food Engineering. Third prize was shared between two. Uh, first, I call upon Satvik P.S., son of Somaya P.T. Stores and Purchase. Satvik. Okay. The next one was Varnadik Shayas, Dr. Jyoti K. I think she is not there. Yeah. Second PUZ, 12th standard. First prize goes to Nirmalya Devanath, son of Dr. Sukumar Devanath. Okay. And the second prize there, the last is the Mridal Arun, son of Arun Kumar, FS and AQCL. So these were the prize winners of this CSAR Foundation Day. I think they will again stand up for a group photo. While doing so, I'll just complete the other formalities. Congratulations to all the prize winners and their proud parents. Congratulations. Maybe you have to stand in the front and they go back. <laughs> we expect the future generation to be taller, faster, brighter, what not. <laughs> So all the very best to all those who participated also. So they made them these the prize winners. So they were not any less to these prize winners. I take this opportunity to thank our director, Dr. Sri Devi Annapurna Singh for the support, encouragement and the guidance provided. I'm extremely thankful to my fellow committee members, Dr. Sukumar Devnath, Srimati Anita, Dr. Usha Dharmaraj, Sri Punil Kumar, Somanna for their proactive thinking and action. I think that was more important. They have wholeheartedly helped uh, me in the conduct of the competitions. I also thank the administration for supporting us. I also thank Secretary, CFTRI Education Society, principal, staff and support staff of the school for their support. Thanks to the staff members and all the participants. As always, it was a great learning experience for the committee. Thank you all once again. Thank you. Uh, I request the dignitary to kindly stay back, please. A very hearty congratulations to all the prize winners and the bigger compliments to all the children who have fought, who gave a tough fight. Give them, give them also a big round of applause. Apart from the game, CFTRI also, the CSIR also recognizes the efforts of the meritorious students of CFTRI family and encourage them with the special prizes. May I now request Srimati Savita, Section Officer, to announce the winners of this year. Good morning, everyone. It is my pleasure to announce the names of the meritorious students 
who have secured 90% and above marks in minimum three science subjects and 100 marks in one of the science subjects in class 12 examination held in 2020-21 and 21-22. Now I request Ms. Purna L, daughter of Srimati Srividhya CS, to come on the stage and receive the award, please. Mr. Suhas K.N., son of Srimati Vasanta U.R., Finance and Accounts. <laughs> Mr. Nakulan A., son of Sri Arulalan K. <laughs> Ms. Sri Tarangini C., daughter of Sri Chakravarti A. Mr. Varun Siddhar, son of Dr. Revati Baskaran. <laughs> Mr. Gaurav U, son of Srimati Gita S. Yes. Ms. Manya S. Rao, Doctor of Sri Satyendra Rao B.V. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Congratulations and all the best for your future endeavors. May I now request our guest of honor to kindly give up his remarks. Please, sir. Namaskar, Suprabhat. It's my pleasure to be here on the CSIR Foundation Day and World Food Day celebration. Really, my area is different, but food, every human body is taking the food. So this is anyhow co-related. So first I, uh, today chief guest, uh, Dr. Chindini Basu Deva, Devappa, NIFTEM Haryana, Director uh, Madam Sri Devi and Purna Singh. She is from my native place also. So, on the day of CSI, our Foundation Day, CFTRI is doing a lot of things that is well known. This is the pre prestigious organization of this part. So, I was talking, they have done. Uh, lot of innovation, what our uh, Prime Minister want, At Nirmar Bharat. So, make in India. So, they are, they are doing lot of innovation is uh, food, that is food processing, food additives, uh, whatever is there that they are doing, and uh, research also related toward food they are doing. Yesterday I was going on, so, more than a lakhs variety of rice is there in the world. And India having more than 400 varieties. And a lot of development is going on. This all depends on you people, scientists who are present here, who are uh, contributing to the country, to nation. So CFTRI is uh, one, of, one of the important uh, organization of uh, 37 CISR uh, uh, research institutions. So I thank CFTRI and uh, uh, there. Regarding World uh, Food Day, it was uh, felt in UN in 1945 due to the lack of uh, fooding and all. Food bring, brings people together in a huge variety of ways from 
family gathering to first uh, dates. Everyone has a flavor food with varieties ranging from pizza to pasta, cookies to cakes, and all of the good stuff in between. So many amazing dishes and ingredients are available to include in our daily life. Food Day celebrate, celebrates them all. World Food Day is not only about celebrating the amazing food, but it is about raising awareness for the people who do not have such privilege. People all over the world who suffer from hunger, starvation is a massive problem in a number of countries and we need to do more to raise awareness and combat the problem. World Food Day can also be leveraged to raise awareness among healthy diets and what bodies need, our body needs. In recent times, education has grown about healthy diets that is organic and all has come nowadays and which foods are healthy, unhealthy, but we are not there yet. World Food Day offers a great opportunity to further educate and awareness in the society. So Food Day, as I told, started in 1945, but it came recognition in 1979 and 15 October, we are organizing the World Food Day. UN 150 countries are celebrating. We are among uh, one of them. The main principal uh, food day celebration is the uh, food for all. Leave no one behind. So uh, whatever my feeling is there, you take that much food, as much you can eat. Don't waste the food such that that may be for another person and uh, for mankind whatever possible you do something lot of uh, millions of children uh, or uh, family are still not getting the food healthy food so my request is there there should not be any wastage of food and uh, whatever uh, with the innovation, we are increasing our food capacity. Madam has told, now we have doubled our capacity. Still, there is a shortage of food. So that, uh, keeping in mind, due to the corona and uh, what the uh, drought and all, we are not able to grow more food. We try to do the research. So here, Institute will do the research also, and they are doing already to increase the uh, food capacity and all. So this is uh, this area, and uh, what about my area? We are printing the currency for uh, uh, our country, one-third uh, uh, banknote we are producing. And for your knowledge, Mysore is the single unit who is producing ink, paper, and printing the currency. Nowhere in the world, all three facilities are there. So one third of the country, around uh, 30 billion million per uh, banknote we are producing daily of all variety. And one more thing I will tell that whatever the new Mahatma Gandhi series is there, that is fully indigenized design in Mysore only. And we have designed that uh, banknote. Coming designs also we are taking up. In future it may come. So uh, Mysore only having the design studio. No, even uh, there are four printing presses are there. One is Mysore, one is Salvoni near to Khadakpur, both are run by RBI. And uh, another two government presses are there, Nasing and Deva. So we put two third of the banknote we produce. They produce one third of the banknote. And during the corona time, we have achieved a single day production of 50 million banknote and total 108 million banknotes, which is some small country's annual production that we have done in one day. So that is our world record also. So uh, we are doing uh, whatever the required for nation, and we, are, we have done the backward integration also. 
Now we have started our ink manufacturing unit. Our, uh, this honorable governor, Sri Sakti Kanta Das, has uh, dedicated an uh, ink factory a uh, few months back to the nation. Paper mill, another paper mill is also coming in uh, Balasor, in Odisha. So uh, earlier we are 98% uh, we are importing the subs uh, whatever material required, but uh, now only we are importing only 2%. So that much drastically we have reduced the dependency on the foreign countries. So coming days, our plan is there due to digital currency, there is a challenge for us for physical notes, so we are planning to go abroad also to pr print the currency of different countries. Make some. Uh, we are also exploring the possibility to make some uh, souvenir things like that. Uh, that is again secret thing, so I can't speak publicly. So uh, we are on the job, and uh, backward integration already varnish also we have manufactured and uh, pigment also we are going to manufacture. And recently we have started to develop one R&D center also for RBI and one uh, uh, more center we are developing, World Class Learning and Development Center, LDC. So that is around our um, prestigious product, nowhere in the world having all facility. So that will be around uh, it will cater the need of the world, not only the India, for training purpose, research purpose, like CSI, CSIR, uh, we are uh, planning to do full research work. So that is our plan. So once again, on the World Food Day and Foundation Day, where I wish all of you a happy day. Jai Hind. Thank you, sir, for your insightful remarks. Though you mentioned your area was different, I think uh, he has, his remarks covered all aspects of food, right from varieties of rices to food additives to safety of food, health, food wastage, and finally on currency manufacturing. Thank you, sir. On the occasion of Foundation Day, CSIR acknowledges the human services of the employees who have superannuated last year, and those who have completed 25 years of their sincere service at the organization. I request Srimati Savita to kindly take over. Hello everyone, it is my privilege to announce the names of the retirees who have rendered the service for more than 30 years in CSIR. Today we shall be honoring the retirees of the year 2021 and 2022. For this I request our chief guest Dr. Chindi Vasudevappa, Vice Chancellor Niftem Haryana to present the shawl, hand over the Saman Patra and memento to the retirees please. We will be starting with the retirees of the year 20. Please save the memento, please.
ಶ್ರೀ ಶಿವಣ್ಣ ಕೆ ಶ್ರೀ ಶರ್ಮಾ ಕೆ ವಿ ಎಸ್ ಎ ಎಸ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಹೃದಯರಾಜ್ ಎ ಶ್ರೀ ಮುಕುಂದ ಕೆ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಅನು ಅಪ್ಪಯ್ಯ ಕೆ ಎ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಮನೋಹರ್ ಬಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಮನೋಹರ್ ಬಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಭಾಸ್ಕರನ್ ಬಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಭಾಸ್ಕರನ್ ಬಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಅವಿನಾಶ್ ಪಿ ಸತ್ತೂರ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಜಯರಾಮ್ ಹೆಚ್ಸಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಜಯರಾಮ್ ಹೆಚ್ಸಿ ಶ್ರೀ ವೆಂಕಟೇಶ ವಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ 
डॉक्टर रतिना राज के डॉक्टर सचिंद्रा एन एम श्री चंद्रशेखर Now I request the retirees of year 2021 to come on the stage for the group photo please. शिवण्णा के श्री शर्मा के वि एस ए एस श्री इरदेयराज ए श्री मुकुंदा के डॉक्टर अनु अपय्या डॉक्टर मनोहर बी डॉक्टर भास्करन बी डॉक्टर अविनाश पी सत्तूर श्री प्रसाद टी श्री जयराम हेच्सी श्री वेंकटेशा वी डॉक्टर रतिना राज डॉक्टर सचिंद्रा एन एम एंड श्री चंद्रशेखर May please stay on the stage. Now we shall continue with the retirees of year 2022. I request Dr. Alok Kumar Srivastav to come on the stage to receive the memento, please. Dr. Alok Kumar Srivastav. Shri Geetesh Menon M.V. Shri Rangadhamaya. श्री रंगधामया,
ಶ್ರೀ ಕಾಟಣ್ಣ ಎಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಕಾಟಣ್ಣ ಎಂ ಶ್ರೀ ರಂಗಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಕೆ ಪಿ ಶ್ರೀ ರಂಗಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಕೆ ಪಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಗಿರಿಯಪ್ಪ ಕೊಳ್ಳನವರ್ ಶ್ರೀಮತಿ ಮಹಾದೇವಿ ಶ್ರೀಮತಿ ಮಹಾದೇವಿ ಡಾಕ್ಟರ್ ಶಶಿಕಲಾ ವಿ ಬಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಸತೀಶ ಎಂ ಆರ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಸತೀಶ ಎಂ ಆರ್ I request the retirees of year 2022 to come on the stage for the group photo please. Dr. Alok Kumar Srivastav, Shri Geetesh Menon MV, Shri Rangadhamaya, Shri Katana M, Shri Rangaswami KP, Dr. Giriyappa, Shri Mati Mahadevi, Dr. Shashikala VB and Shri Satisha MR. Thank you everyone. Thank you ma'am sir. Thank you Savita. Oh. Congratulations to all the retirees and we wish you our best of your health in the coming days. 
Now it's the time we all are waiting for, that is to hear from our chief guest, our renowned food technologist, Dr. C. Vasudevappa. Please, sir, the dais is yours. ಈ ಶುಭ ದಿನದಂದು ನಿಮ್ಮೆಲ್ಲರಿಗೂ ನನ್ನ ಹಾರ್ದಿಕ ಧನ್ಯವಾದಗಳು ಮತ್ತು ಶುಭಾಶಯಗಳು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಆಲ್ ಆಫ್ ಯು for assembling here to celebrate the CSIR, CFTR, of course it is a CSIR Foundation Day and the World Food Day 2022. It's a great moment. In fact, very happy and very much pleased to be amidst all of you, especially honoring, I would say, the madam only has left the newborns. Otherwise, everybody at all levels right from LKG to the 11th or 12th standard, I think people have been honored. And congratulations to each one of the winners. And at the same time, all the kids who really participated, I think it's a great honor for the parents of the students. So that apart, I think, you know, very happy and very nice to see my good friends, senior people who are, you know, who have completed 25 years, but still some people are working, but some people are retired. But all the same, I think it's a great moment in everybody's life that to, to get recognized by the Mother Institute where they really worked for 25 long years, which has not only molded their careers, even the career of the family. That's what is the greatness of any institution where you belong to, especially for a long period of 20, 25 years. I think that's, that's wonderful. And it's a great, I would say, a sort of honor for every one of us probably to be you know, part of this entire celebration. And uh, thank you, madam, for uh, providing this opportunity. And uh, it's a great uh, pleasure for me to be amidst all of you. <coughs> Coming back, I thought, what is that I can speak today? In fact, I thought something on social obligations for food scientists should be the theme on which how we can really pulsate to the need of the society the need of the, the country. I think that's where I think we are. In fact, uh, this is one thing which is very, very important in the sense we have passed through a lot of hurdles, transformations, pandemics, and all these things. Probably that is where we, we belong to. In fact, uh, the whole world has experienced it. And today, still we are the stable and sustainable country as far as the food is concerned. Thanks each one of you for providing this impetus and also the support in taking forward the issues concerning with the food. <coughs> and I would always cherish and very happy to recognize CSIR, CFTRI as the, is the mother of all food innovations in the country. Because <laughs> this, this is the oldest institution and where the whole country belongs. And probably many of your people, I would say I have met many of them in the industry who are from CFTRI. That's a great moment, not only for you, even for us, since we also, the kit of the great mother, in fact, I would say Niftam has just born 10 years back. And we are uh, molding ourselves. I know it takes some time, but uh, we have transformed right from, I would say, as an institution or a deemed to be university, and today as an institution of national importance. This is the journey which is going on. 
Probably, I think the journey is much more far ahead in the sense we need to meet the challenges and the demand of the industry on one side and the societal demands on the other side. I think uh, these are the two things which we need to balance as an institution. This, I think, uh, CFTRA has been doing it very wonderfully well. Next, please. Next, please. Yeah. Let me just, I'll take only about five minutes to speak about NIFTEM and probably come to the social issues and the, uh, the, I would say the things which we are supposed to be getting involved. This is, this is the institute, the entry part of it, and I would say it is one of the state-of-art facilities created by the Ministry of Food Processing Industries, uh, which has uh, wonderful uh, facilities as far as the teaching is concerned, and maybe the innovations, the startups, the business incubations, all that is coming up in a very big way. And of course, it has a good vision, I would say, to be an international center of excellence which integrates all facets of technology, entrepreneurship, and management. I think this is something, the very name NIFTEM itself suggests this, and also is recognized as a focal point for catalyzing the growth of the processing industry in India and also in the global context. I think you know, this is something which, when we started, we were finding it difficult to locate people or to get recognized amongst the people, but today I tell you, NIFTEM is known everywhere, and probably I am very proud that wherever I go, our students are there, plus the industry also recognizes. That is the greatness of the thing which is happening. Of course, uh, the departments and all that, if you look, we have about only a small five departments, which are likely to be increased because now we have become an INI, and uh, we take for BTEC, MTEC, MBA, and PhD programs, and this is going on very well. Apart from the departments, we have skill development division, and probably the consultancy part of it, again, it's picking up very well. In fact, the uh, Center of Entrepreneurship Development, which I would say again, the agricultural universities where the food technology is involved, all of them are coming to NIFTEM for entrepreneurship development. That apart, of course, we have started one more innovative, I would say, wing. That's called Contract Research Organization. Now, depending on the government of India for funds to carry out research is becoming difficult especially when we want to address the industry requirements. There we have made them as partners, and they are paying the whole, I would say, the uh, project cost, and they get the result within about eight to 10 months, and they'll take it and use it. And of course, the other thing is the corporate resource division, which again, I would say, is a very important step forward as far as the students are concerned, because they are molded to the corporate sector with all rigorous training, and also the placement, and I would say the internship, everything is done. Earlier, internship used to be on a request basis. We used to request the industry to take our students for internship of six months. Today, believe me, the, the industries are coming and paying for internship for the students to join them. So that is the difference we have made, and probably that is one very important step forward where we are very proud. And of course, placement, Almost, I would say, 100%, 95% we are just giving and every year, and sometimes, in, uh, especially in some of the programs, it is 100%. <clears throat> the ranking, of course, these are all academic interest, but I would say initially we were at 50. Now everybody became aware to apply for the NIR of ranking, and that's how I think we have come to 121. The ecosystem, if you see, especially for entrepreneurship, as is around the CFTR also is a pioneer in it, we have also established the pilot plants, maybe in uh, fruits and vegetable products, meat and poultry products, and then uh, milk and dairy, ready to eat products, and traditional foods also we have established one, and also the bakery and baked uh, products. In addition to this, we have developed a center of excellence, especially on Danfoss. This is uh, on a cold chain technology and management. This is becoming very, very important, especially when we are addressing the value chain management. So these are all the, project, the facilities which we have. And very recently, of course, maybe about two years back, NIFTEM has started NTIBAF, that is the NIFTEM Technology Innovation and Business Incubation Foundation, where people are made to apply for the, the incubation part of it, the startups, and the, uh, we even given the funding support Maybe the small seed money, seed money we give, and the process optimization we help by utilizing our labs and all that, product standardization, incubation, and also even scaling up. And probably that is one thing which is very, very important, and scaling up the technology also is taken care. 
So we have a food research, you know, and uh, especially analysis, food research and analysis lab, which is uh, doing very well. It's a nationally recognized, uh, you know, referral laboratory, which has all the services, maybe about 2,500 or 3,000 parameters we are trying to, you know, uh, evaluate and also give the results. In addition to that, we do have a center of excellence on food fortification, which we have started very recently in collaboration with GAIN and, and uh, uh, I, uh, there is uh, one more private uh, industry which has come forward. We are just doing on oil fortification and uh, wheat fortification and also the rice fortification. These are three things which we are doing at present. Of course, the technologies, there are about 13 or 14 technologies which we have come out and we are transferring it to the industry part of it. I would say uh, good, very good uh, response is there. Uh, and even the packing, uh, the packaging material which is developed at NIFTEM is being used by Amazon for you know, wrapping the food. So that is something which is very good, which is uh, very, we are very proud of it. Like that, there are many technologies which I don't want to get into that. And we have two, of course, so far, I have applied for nine or ten for patents, out of which two have been granted. One, of course, is the antimicrobial uh, layered nanocomposite for uh, co precipitation synthesis of uh, economically layered silver iron oxide nanocomposites for rapid killing of the bacterial pathogens. This is very, very found to be very instant and useful. And new method for preservation of sugarcane juice. This was done by faculty and the students. So, this is what I said about uh, NTI BIF. And where we have already, you know, every year we are taking about eight to ten, you know, the incubators, and they are given a seed money of about five lakh rupees, and also the market linkages are established for them, and the investor interaction sessions and demo day, all these things have been conducted, and a lot of industries do come and take up this as a sort of a business business occasion. This is another a flagship activity, the village adoption program. So where, in fact, I would say here, the students go to the village. Students, faculty, even the technical staff, everybody go to the, excepting PhDs. PhDs will be more of a supervisor. B.Tech, M.Tech, and MBA students, we send them. It varies from, say, about 15 days to 36 days. And people stay in the village. And uh, the broad activities are uh, rural life orientation, food processing, and uh, value addition activities, food preservation and storage, promoting entrepreneurship, and in fact, even the awareness building amongst the school children, all this we do. And then the DPRs, we make them DPR if somebody is interested. Soil health and climate change. Swachabara Tabiyan, this is another very big program. Of course, food and nutritional security. These are all the subjects on which our students work in the villages. We have covered about 22 states. More than 90 villages across the whole country have been covered under this program. So these are the salient achievements under this Village Adoption Program, Agricultural Leadership Award in Entrepreneurship and de uh, Development in Food Sector. And we, uh, NIFTEM was associated with Rashtrapati Bhavan, and they had, we had uh, no, adopted five villages, and the whole program was funded by Rashtrapati Bhavan. That is the Smart uh, Gram Project. And of course, very important thing is the Platinum Award for Best Employability Initiative was given by Aso uh, no, HR Association of India especially after assessing the, the village adoption program. The recent innovations are like I told you already, the staple uh, no, fortification, and then maybe I think you know, the greening of food and the processing sector, that is waste to wealth uh, conversion, center of excellence on cold chain technology management, and center of excellence on industrial consultancy, that is through contract research organization, and the center for advanced translational research, in nano biotechnology, this we are establishing. In fact, there are some hiccups in this because it involves huge cost. I, I managed to get some money, but still I think you know, it is to be uh, taken on a sound footing. The bakery pilot plant and establishment of sensory food, te food testing laboratory, all these things are functional. And one very important thing is our, you know, the pilot plants, we have made it in such a way the plants, uh, plants will always be active because we give it to the private people and industry people to run it. And our students get trained along with them. So that is the concept with which we are working. And in fact, this concept is working very well in NIFTEM. Coming to the topic, I would say that here, social obligations for food scientists. Probably, I think you know, this is something which is very important. So we know that it's a very fast-growing industry in the whole world. 
and supported by availability of a large quantity of raw material, which in fact India is a huge country of 1,000 million ton food production every year, more than that maybe. Uh, but the amount of processed food, if you take, probably it's only about 10 or 12 or 15 percent. It comes to that much today. Otherwise, earlier it was very, very small. So that way, I think, you know, we are uh, multiple climatic zones are there where we can meet any challenges of the whole world. That is a great advantage of this. And largest producer of milk and, of course, mangoes, gavas, papayas, ginger, okra, globally. In fact, India is recognized for this. And then the second largest producer of wheat, rice, fruits, vegetables, tea, and sugar cane, cashew nut, and all that globally again. So that means we are a huge, and I would say raw material base. So how do we convert that into a product? Probably I think a lot of work is going on. And uh, the growth is quite phenomenally good, I would say 11.8%, 1.8%, which for the last six or eight years. And 9.87% uh, of gross value add addition in terms of manufacturing sector, which is happening especially in India. And another very big, uh, I would say, advantage with this is the spin-off is that the employability is very, very high. In fact, uh, this is the sector which, you know, maybe has about more than 50 lakh people in an unorganized sector and about 20 lakh people in the organized sector. That's a huge number, in fact, for India. So these are all the food security versus nutritional security. Anyway, we, I just don't want to touch upon already many things have been said. In fact, I would say here, India is supposed to be, you know, the 25 percent of the hungry people are in India and the poor people. So that we need to eradicate. That's where probably the today's the world food concept, leave no one behind, is something which is very apt for India. How do we address this, especially to drive out uh, I would say the stunting or the wasting or the underweight or the overweight and also see now I think you know the requirement, RDA requirement, how do we meet because still more than 60 or 70 percent of the population gets only 50 percent of the RDA. So how do we make it at least 90 percent? I think that is something which is great and for which we are obligated, all of us. And this is the business of malnutrition. I would say if you look at only the premix production and marketing, this itself is a three, more than 3,000 crore rupees business. Could be on rice, could be on wheat, could be on edible oil, could be, and I would say, on uh, uh, the milk and all that. There is a huge amount of requirement in terms of, you know, the qualitative improvement and maybe to meet, especially the malnutrition is mainly addressed because as per the UN, it is the vitamins and minerals which are deficient in food, which need to be supplemented for a better health. So, but if you take it that way, I think you know, it's a huge business by itself. And probably we need to look at this very seriously because there is a huge amount of, uh, you know, the, maybe the requirement of maybe vitamin B12, iron, folic acid, and things like that for fortification. And uh, maybe there are many more uh, requirements of the, the micronutrients. And I would even further say, the protein fortification is something which is very, very important today. In fact, we are a carbo-based country. How do we overcome the imbalance in the food through proper fortification of both the proteins, the fats, or in other words, the, the energy part of it, and then the vitamins, minerals? I think this is something which is very, very important. I don't wish to get into all the details because otherwise it would take more time. Can we think beyond in a cost-effective manner under a social obligation. This is where I think you know, we need to be very conscious. I know we are producing more, but it is just not balanced, which doesn't meet the requirement of a normal human being. Of course, the major issue today is access for good and quality food is something which is very difficult, though we produce in large quantity. That means we are wasting a lot of food, but it we doesn't reach everybody in the whole you know, universe or in the country to meet their requirement. That is where I think you know, we have a big challenge. Probably we need to look at this very seriously. That means we have sufficient quantity. So how do we meet sufficient quantity and sufficient quality also? That means that uh, SQ to 2S and 2Q, I think this is something which is very, very important, which we need to really address. So to become more, I would say, food, uh, especially the food and uh, nutritional security oriented country. Various policy measures, in fact, the Ministry of Food Processing Industries, Government of India has taken a lot of policy measures in this direction. And uh, there are two programs which are more directed towards this, is the PM, FME, 
Then, of course, the PM, KSY. These are all the very important program, especially FME is one, which is for formalization of the micro food industries or entrepreneurs in the country, which has been taken with a cost of something like about 10,000 crore rupees over five years. And uh, the, whereas the PM, KSY, is for, it, it's about 22, 23,000 uh, crore rupees over five years. A huge in in initiative of the Prime Minister of India, and in a way, I think it is taken up in a very big way. Inclusion of food and agro-based processing units and cold chains as agricultural activity under priority sector lending scheme. I think this is something which is very, very important because I know getting a loan, bank loan, was very difficult earlier. Now also it is not that easy, but it has been eased out. I would say that is where I think you know, we are in an advantageous position. Probably that is the reason why we have a huge number of startups. Everywhere people are getting into the food industry as a startup company. In fact, I am seeing a lot of uh, variety of food which I think India is blessed with. Right from Himalayas to the Kerala, I think you know, we have a huge you know, variety of foods. In fact, I talk to all these people because they all come to NIFTA. And we have a wonderful discussion with them. In fact, the other day, I had people from, I would say, Jha, you know, uh, Himachal Pradesh and also from Uttarakhand. You know, believe me, the kind of food what they get and what they regard it as you know, the organic foods are not available in any part of the world. That means these are all things which have a huge value and huge demand across the whole country as far as the health benefits are concerned. And of course, uh, setting up a special food processing fund of uh, 2,000 crore, this is done by NABARD. In fact, uh, not only on providing the, uh, the, I would say, the loan facility, even inter interest subvention and all these things are also happening. And of course, investment in setting up of mega food parks and processing units in the MOFP also. That is, the Ministry of Food Processing Industries has provided huge funds for these things. Unfortunately, I would say, the mega food park concept did not work well for the country like India. Whereas the, the smaller processing, agro-processing clusters, this is doing good, especially in many states, northern India, especially UP, I would say UP, Madhya Pradesh, and maybe Himachal Pradesh, and even, I would say, even small states like Jharkhand, they are coming up in a very big way with this uh, sort of a thing. And of course, towards improving ease of holding and uh, doing good uh, food business, FSSA has shifted from product by product approval to an ingredient, and I would say, and uh, additive-based approvals. This is something which, again, is very, very important because I know we, in the event of, I would say, in the process of making value addition, giving better quality for the food, we are adding too many ingredients, which many a times are not recognized by FSSI. So this has become very important, and where keeping in view of the product base, the approvals are given by FSSA. That is one very good improvement. That is the reason probably we have what you call the eat right movement, which was initiated by FSSA. And 100% FDI, that is the foreign direct investment and our automatic route, uh, this is already uh, no, promoted by the food industry. In fact, this is the reason we are getting a lot of investments from Japan, from China, from various other countries in India which is happening. Otherwise, it used to be West or US-based companies. Today, you see a lot of even the Gulf countries. The other day, even the African countries, they want to invest something in India. So that's how I think it's happening. That's a good thing. So these are the, this is the trends in food technology in India, I would say that, because these are all the recent trends. So how do we bring in the value addition in terms of maybe artificial intelligence and uh, robotics, online food delivery services? These things are happening now. In fact, I was very happy when uh, when I saw a video from a Bangalore-based company, robotics are used for the kitchen. So everything is made by them. Even you know, the, not only preparation, even the serving part of it is done by robotics. And then the virtual restaurants and uh, novel packaging technologies and the vegan foods, this is picking up very well because now the whole world is looking for the vegan foods and maybe the plant-based proteins, which are becoming very, very important. And the personalized nutrition, especially this is given a lot of importance by the dietitians today. And dietitians do represent, and they come to NIFTEM and to such organizations like CFTRI, where they can get a lot of inputs for making the personalized foods. This is very, very important. Then the food waste utilization. This is uh, maybe valorization of food is something which is very, very important for the country like ours. And the 3D printing, which is also taking a shape. And uh, nano encapsulation technology, which I am seeing already in millets happening. And uh, the people are coming up with coated, you know, I would say, the millets, which otherwise get spoiled very fast. And uh, probably the 
uh, I would say sensor technology and then the blockchain. This is one thing I would say which has come up in a very big way and a very useful way I would say because the traceability concepts have become people have become very conscious especially the uh, western world has become very conscious about the traceability of the food that way the 3d i would say the the blockchain concept gives you the entire history of right from production to the processing and even the the, uh, the value chain management and the the, uh, no, the when, where it is sold and all that that's a very good thing and then of course internet of things which is becoming very very common for all of us this calls for uh, you know i would say a social front where I would say we need to accept the challenges for uh, food processing sector, maybe the supply chain or maybe the inadequate link between production and processing, this is something which is very, very important. Seasonality of operations, this is another thing which was there now. In fact, people are importing a lot of plant material from outside to have crops during the off season. So how do we do that? I know it is done only by very few players. Maybe I think you know, this, big, this may become very important in the years to come. And the supply chain, institutional gaps, especially procurement dependence on APMC markets. I think earlier the APMC market was regarded as a wonderful, I would say, concept which has come in now. But now I would say many more developments have taken place in that. And in our inadequate focus on quality and safety of the standards. I think this is one thing at the end where we need to be very conscious about the safety and quality of the products which on which awareness has to be built. I know people take it for granted. Anything which is tasty is a good food. No. Anything which is not safe is not good food at all. That also we need to bring in. And uh, of course, product development, processing, value addition, all these things become essential. So this is where I think the food wastage, which is happening, I would say there are about 20% loss in the field and at harvest, especially when the agriculture production is taking place, which the reasons are, could be many. But I know all this may not be able to resolve, but anyway, we need to reduce it. As much we reduce, it's good for us. And uh, farm storage, I think this is a great danger area for us. Storage, still, gunny bags take one over the other without even giving, taking care of the heat that is generated and the, the probably the associated microbes and germs and pathogens and all that, that will lead to a lot of, I would say, spoilage of food. 20%, that's what they claim. And 5 to 20% the market requirements. I think you know, this is something, again, the huge loss takes place in the markets. 5 to 20% of it may be improper management of the, or handling of the product. And 5 to 15% is on the transport. This is where I think you know, the, Cold chain logistics definitely will uh, make a big uh, role, they will have a big role in this unless we have the logistics well established. Probably we do have one collaboration from an, an, an international agency, especially on the cold chain logistics, and that is going to really give us some, you know, I would say, uh, inputs into how best we can organize ourselves using the locally available energy. That is very, very important. How do we do that? Yeah. And then, of course, uh, Market again, another 10 to 15 percent, which is poor stock management and unbalanced nutrition and all that, and no refrigeration and poor physical handling. These are all things which do happen. That means how much we are losing. We are losing. That's a huge amount. In fact, if, uh, as per FAO, it is about 50, 50 percent we are losing. But when you look at our own Indian assessment, probably it is not that much. So this is where I see the fruits and vegetables. They are the highest, 45 percent is lost and cereals are 30 percent and uh, no, no, this, this cost so much for us probably in India it has been estimated roughly I would say 100,000 crore rupees is the loss every year that is happening from food. So how do we reduce this is, our, is the challenge for all of us. And of course dairy 20 percent I know because of unhygienic management of the dairy products. This is where a lot of it is lost. And of course, the oil seeds and pulses, again, here also 20%, because these are one, these are things, especially the pulses, you cannot store them for a long without proper treatment. So you can see, you know, at home also, even ladies also will be experiencing, you keep the dal and all that for a longer period, you see the holes in it by some of these, you know, the pests and all that. So fish, of course, seafood, this is, of course, a highly perishable commodity, 30 to 35 percent, and then the meat is about 25, 20 percent. These are all the losses which we are experiencing. So now, of course, uh, MOFP commissioned a study. 
which was given to, I would say, CIFET Ludhiana, where they conducted a study and sub uh, submitted the report in 2017. They covered about uh, 46 agricultural products producers in 107, I would say, districts of the, randomly selected districts of the country. This is what is the assessment. Cereals, it is about, uh, say, about 6% loss. Pulses about eight, uh, no, 6 6 to 8.1%. Oil seeds about, about 10%. Fruits, vegetables about 15.8 or 16%. Milk about 0.92%. They claim it is very poor, very less loss in milk. Fisheries, it is about 5.3. And both inland marine put together, it's about 10, 12%. And then the meat is about 2.7%. So the losses in quantity deterioration, quality deterioration of food and food value and kitchen losses, plate table losses and loss of goodwill on uh, our reputation, seed vigor losses and, and these are not difficult to estimate. These are not included in this loss. So if all that is included, our loss will be much higher. And of course, report estimate the post-harvest losses both by inquiring various stakeholders and actual the farmers. So this has been done based on that and I would say here again, Probably, I think, you know, still we, have, we don't have a conclusive report on food losses in the country. But again, one more study was in a, initiated, and it was given to CIFET Ludhiana, but still, I think, the final report has not come out yet. So this is another thing which we have been talking about, the UN Sustainable Development Goals. These are all things. Maybe, I think, we have about 17 UN goals. Out of which, one which is very important is res responsible consumption and probably production. These things become very, very important. I know most of the UN development goals are interlinked. I, I, I cannot single out one particular, say this is, this is referring only to food. All are interconnected with food because the technologies are involved, the health is involved, the poverty is involved, and the quality, education is involved. All these things, they are part of the UN development goals. But how do we address this? I think you know, this is something which, again, make uh, the SDGs a reality. How do we do it? 12.3, uh, under 12.3, 12, 12 uh, no, by 2030, if we can reduce our food loss by half, if we can do that, that's a great achievement on the part of the, the food scientists of the country. That's what has been claimed. And of course, we are all uh, in a party for all that. We need to work hard on this, come up with a lot of usable technologies, how we can use the food that is so-called a waste, convert that into value-added product, which can be used not necessarily as food, could be used in various other you know, spheres as well. The small-scale you know, uh, utilization approaches are like, of course, watermelon rind is thrown, but the technology has come to make pickle out of it, and maybe the carrot, carrot pulp and a cheese a cake. I think that it's, a, it's a converted, it's a sort of a different kind of a taste, cheese-like, and which is made even from the, the, uh, the carrot uh, pulp or peel. And the banana peel chutney. So these are all the things which, of course, CFTRA has done this work. I think you know, I, ha I heard that report once. And probably jackfruit seed powder chutney. These are all things which are highly nutritious, which can be used even for human consumption. These are all few examples which I'm giving. So valorization, of course, is nothing but what I just spoke, or that is that either food products, feed products are converting it into, uh, or extracting food or uh, feed ingredients, biofuels, bioplastics, chemicals, and other valuable compon uh, components from the waste. So this is what we need to really address, and probably I think this is what uh, we need to be very focused on the center of excellence as wherever we establish should focus these issues. And of course, the best part are the, the recommendation of the UN is that recycle, reuse, and reduce wastage. So recycle the food, reuse it, and also reduce the wastage, and so that we achieve zero waste, which I don't know when it will become reality, but at least if we can reduce by 50% of the waste, probably we have achieved our goals. So these are all how actually the whole thing can be utilized for bioethanol, biodiesel, acetone uh, production, and butanol production, and maybe succinic acid sources, and therapeutic and uh, things, and starch, and cellulose uh, fibers, and uh, probably iso, um, uh, iso orbits, and uh, lactic acid esters, and all these things we can produce. Only thing we need to have a good chemistry background, and how to convert that into a value added, a product or a byproduct, which can be used. Rather than converting the main food into some uh, food supplements, Utilize these things and come up with food supplements. That is what is required. 
so that the main food is available, staple is available for us food. This can be value added and cycled, recycled back and reused again. These are all the smart foods which have been uh, rarely recognized for uh, the globally, and the millets are reg regarded as the super uh, cereals today. We, though we were calling them as nutri cereals, and everybody is talking about millets, and next year being the international year of millets, a lot of activities are happening in millets. In fact, uh, Madam also was there along, uh, we both of us were there in Hyderabad. We have seen a lot of companies coming forward with various kinds of products, which have a huge market in India. Today, believe me, millets are catching up the, I would say, the hearts of people for the simple reason, India is a huge country with a diabetic you know, score very high. Maybe about 70% of the Indians at various stages, they have diabetics. That's what is the, 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 you know, the report which says. Probably these are all things which have low glycemic index, and I would say not necessary that they are matching, but they are slow releases of the sugars. This is where I think you know, that is the reason it, it help, helps improve the nutrition part of it. And uh, probably I think mushrooms, lentils, sword beans, moringa, these are all things which are very, very important as far as the vegetables are concerned. Banana has been regarded as usual as the best fruit, and uh, probably jackfruit, dragon fruit, guava, pear, and apples, and ma of course, mango, bale. I think these are all uh, the fruits. Of course, among the cereals, I know, we don't have much to say, excepting the millet part coming into cereals again. And black wheat, of course, these are all regionally important you know, varieties of uh, the crops. In fact, uh, we had what you call the ODOP, one district, one product concept, which was introduced by the ministry under PMFME program. And we found that there are some districts where the black wheat is grown uh, very well. And it has a huge demand. Market rate is very high for black wheat. Kiona, and then a specialty rice, chia, these things are regarded as cereals for future. And of course, the supply chain issues in India, again, I think you know, this is where we are struck many a times. We lose most of our food through this improper supply chain. I would say low level of processing, high wastages, and probably unremunerative uh, prices to the farmers. This is creating more problem of adulteration and all that, and lack of quality, uh, non-demand driven uh, productions. Because each season we don't even prioritize what we should grow and what would be the market and all that, and no information sharing. So these are all things which I would say are very important for all of us. And possible emerging solutions, of course, direct marketing of produce by farmers. I know now the, con the concept of contract uh, farming is coming up. So which, though not approved by Government of India, many companies I will say many corporates have started corporate farming in the northern part of the country, even in, in Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. It's coming up in a big way. Probably this is one where right from seed to the product, quality is taken care, and even I would say the plant protection or the crop protection is taken care. That's where I think they are getting good production, including the marketing part of it, the buyback part of it. I know there are some disadvantages, as has been projected by the government, but they can be sorted out very easily if you are a, a, a farmer producer organization or a contract research organization and things like that. Then, of course, uh, the need-based agri-food uh, startups, I think this is, again, getting connected with people, especially the youth, very fast. And probably, I think now, CFTRA technology is spreading everywhere because of these startups. And I would say that this is happening, not only in CFTRA, even in other institutions also. There are a lot of things which are coming, and probably a lot of youngsters are getting into. And I don't know how actually the whole thing, the engineers who are supposed to be earning better, they are getting into this sort of an avocation, where startups they want to do, and also produce something which is unique, and where they can command the, the market. And then, of course, more of, I would say, we need to support the primary and secondary processing at village level. I think this, was, this happened especially in, I would say, pulses in the beginning. But still, I would say, especially for the millets and other major cereals, still it has not happened. Maybe dal, uh, especially flour, uh, honey, jaggery, pickle, etc. This is happening at the rural level. So solutions emerging is, of course, I have been telling all this. These are the cold chain development and uh, probably the structure for horticulture supply is something very important. Blockchain in food supply chains, I think you know, this is something which is going to become a revolution for all of us. We need to be very clear of what is that really blockchain is. Many people are 
uh, misinterpreting it in many ways, but the whole concept is that it is end-to-end -end a sort of a database management through, again, finally result into a big data, and then it can even develop a prediction models which will help us to monitor, manage, and also probably deliver. And robotics and drone technologies and other innovative ICT tools. So this is, this is the, uh, sort of, uh, the I'll, I'll just give you a brief of it. Plant protein forward, this has picked up very much, especially in the world. And in fact, next week, I'll be in Toronto, Canada, where the plant protein forward, they have taken it up in a big way, a conference, and India is sending a delegation. Two delegations are going. Probably I think this is one thing which is relevant for India, and we can do much better than that. And innovations in packaging material, this has been discussed, and of course, a lot of these biodegradable packaging and uh, uh, smart packaging, and all these things are coming up. Probably this is very, very important. And intelligent and uh, smart packaging, that's what I said. The other thing is uh, uh, need for, of course, I know I don't want to further explain all this. You all know this. But one thing which we need to understand why, why it, we are giving uh, importance for this is emission of less greenhouse gases, which has become a danger, especially in the developed countries. Not that India doesn't have the problem, but we need to address this issue, and which I think probably switching over. India is more a vegetarian country, but all the same, the meat requirement also is very high. It is likely to double in another 10 years, the requirement itself. That means how do we, at least that part of it, can be dragged towards the plant protein? I think this is what is the concept. So how do we bring in this? This is a big policy debate going on, and uh, we wish that this will be taken forward in the good way. And of course, the other important thing is the pesticides, the antibiotic usage, which is especially done in crop production, need to be controlled. So which otherwise will not happen, especially in the, even in the animals. Today, the chicken, what we eat, has a lot of steroids. And uh, probably, I think, you know, we have to be careful. And how do we you know, give out or uh, come up with a different uh, idea and thinking? Probably that's where the plant protein based, where the millets are projected as a huge super crop. So I think you know, we need to look at all these things and develop a more sustainable food ecosystem to meet the global demand, the meat demand. So intelligent and smart packaging, I think you know, this is something which I already told. This can check food freshness without opening them. So intelligent packaging, you know, there the technology probes are so much coming up, IT-based technologies to check the quality of the food, to detect the bacterial growth, and maybe easily integrated in food packaging. It can be easily integrated, safe in direct contact with food. So this is where I think you know, we need to look at these technologies. And probably reduced carbon footprint, I already told, zero waste uh, processing, or net zero, or circular economy. I think these are all interlinked, especially with regard to the value chain management. And then the efficient treatment of the pollutants, or I would say the uh, effluents of the plant, uh, processing plants, I think this is very, very important. And uh, food systemic, or food system approach is again picking up across the whole globe. I would say probably many of you are in touch with maybe the FFF, Future Food Foundation. This is again addressing the system approach for promoting the value chain management across the whole globe. And how do we do it? And how do we reduce the cost? And how do we bring in the sustainability in this? Probably this is where I think you know, we are just looking up. Probably the social sustainability and the benefits to the society are really you know, addressed here. And the environmental sustainability and positive uh, or neutral impact on the natural environment. This is something which is, again, very, very important. That apart, of course, the economic growth has always to be kept in mind. Role of a food scientist in quality assurance, I think you know, this I need not mention further. This is generally repeated. And the role of a food scientist, I would say, especially here, uh, the quality assurance is something which, again, we need to create awareness. I think you know, the awareness is very poor, especially when you talk about the quality or safety of the food. This we have been talking in every fora, but I would say still, it is better now. In fact, earlier gone are the days when packed food is always the best. But today, it's just not packing. It is the quality of food which is inside the packaging. And the, the FSSI, the requirements of the data, that is very, very important. Unless we look into all that, we should not buy anything. Maybe the raw material specifications are important. Good manufacturing practices are to be indicated. And probably 
creative you know, action and uh, preventive actions, otherwise it will reduce the value of the food. And uh, the root cause analysis, if you do, probably we can improve the, the quality and uh, in terms of its saleability and all that. Non-conforming materials or products. This is something which is again a danger. That's why FSSA has gone for the, uh, the I would say, the, uh, the ingredient approvals rather than the product approval. And then, of course, the food safety issues become very important. So I, I'll just skip this. Role of a food scientist, if you look at probably, I think, can uh, assess uh, to uh, knowledge resources. I think uh, this is something, again, we are all doing. Maybe we are creating a band of, I would say, the knowledgeable you know, the food scientists for the country and uh, through students. And uh, years to come, probably they will become, uh, in, they will be in the forefront to assess and to promote all the quality and safety of it. And uh, the development of professional skills and competencies today the new education policy which has come, this has given more focus for the skill development and also the entrepreneurship development. Probably gone are the days when degree is four years or degree is three years. You can even complete one year and you get a certificate. And again, from that, you can get some you know, bank loan and all that. That is what is the new education policy. We need to really focus and adapt. Probably I wish uh, the, all the food institutes in the country can join together come up with a new education policy which is good for, because that is all, we always focus towards the engineering part of it or the humanities part of it and the general science part of it, which otherwise doesn't address the food issues. So this is one thing which I felt, so participating in all the UGC meetings and all that, I feel this is something which is very, very important. Network and community building, I think you know, this is happening in a very effective way in India and we are working, upskill entrepreneurship for future business, I think you know, the scaling up of technologies, what we produce or what we claim has to be really done. This would definitely make you know, everyone to be an entrepreneur by themselves. And capacity building program has to be given an impetus. UN food system approach again, of course, you know, this is again the same thing. The agri-food SMEs need to be really given a focus, probably to come up with, I would say, the, uh, the sustainable food systems for the whole world. Imagine a future where new generations and ecosystems thrive. So these are all the people because Africa has taken an example because the higher uh, the hunger index of Africa is the highest in the world, and uh, that is the reason uh, the children who are there probably they should appreciate uh, the quality of food what they are getting and their health. So this is something. This is where I think probably you can see the Delhi where urban food system to be you know debated because a lot of landfills where all these food waste and the domestic waste, everything comes probably on the way to Sonepath, Madam would have seen, there's a huge hill which is established because of the, uh, the wasted uh, material. So these are some things which are a challenge and how do we convert? Of course, a lot of efforts are going on to valorize these things and how do they do it and probably they are looking more towards producing a sort of a material for uh, as an alternative to concrete or maybe ethanol production and things like that. But we need to look at how best we can also derive some benefits out of it. So uh, collaboration, especially on uh, food systems transformation and food security is very, very important for us, especially to promote recycle, reuse, and uh, probably reduce the wastage on one side and zero waste on the other side. So way forward, of course, I have been talking all the issues are concerned, maybe a suitable or a sustainable policy, you know, support or an advocacy is very, very important for us, for all the institutes, and improved supply chain, which is really working, you know, which is really uh, on the forefront, I would say, and we need to really address this. Food quality standards, of course, this is also going on in a big way. Innovations, it's all for us. So how do we come up with new innovations? having the holistic approach of the requirement of the whole country or a societal requirement or the general health of the public because the amount of money which India and an average per capita expenditure on health is the highest in the world. So how do we reduce this? How do we bring in quality? And the output in terms of per capita is also not that great for India. It's because of the poor health or because of their, I would say, the low IQs and all that because of improper health management. And then, of course, reduce harvest and post-harvest losses, entrepreneurship development and skill development. These things become very, very important in the years to come. And adoption in uh, technologies. I think you know, they're the upskilling of technologies. 
not only the promotion of the production of technology, upskilling of technologies become very, very important, skilled and trained manpower. These are all the requirements for the coming forward. I think. If we can help food producers to reduce losses through better harvesting, processing, storage, and marketing methods, probably I think under, uh, combine with uh, this with the profound and lasting changes in the way people consume food, because the, this is one concept which is coming. Earlier, we were eating anything and everything as food, but we are very conscious about what we want to eat. So this is to be brought in together. We may then have a healthier and hunger-free world. This is a quote given by FAO Director General, Jos uh, Graziano De Silva, and I would say this is very important and pertinent for India. So thank you very much for your kind patience and leering. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. May I request the dignitaries to please come back to the dais. Thank you, sir, for addressing us with the most relevant topic, that is the social obligation for food scientists. As you rightly mentioned, food scientists have an additional but yet a very important responsibility as food is the basic need of all. And zero hunger, nutritious food for all, is one of the most important sustainable development goals of UN, which is, as you said, twinned with many other goals. Thank you so much. May I request a director, ma'am, for a kind remarks. Thank you, Dr. Purnima. I think you will all agree that we had a wonderful uh, talk um, by our chief guest today who touched upon all aspects of uh, food science and technology, especially our social obligations. I think this obligation is uh, more important and relevant uh, uh, than ever. And uh, I had an opportunity to uh, visit NIFTEM and they have a wonderful uh, uh, setup over there. Their pilot plants are excellent, state of the art, and uh, they have uh, given it on rent to the entrepreneurs who are uh, manufacturing there and uh, selling. Also, the students are working it at night, and they sell within the campus too, which is a very good uh, learning uh, experience. And. Uh, um, uh, so thank you very much for uh, touching upon everything. Uh, you have given an overview of uh, food processing uh, sector as well as uh, food and nutritional security. And uh, numbers always impress, whether it is 3,000 crores or 100,000 crores in terms of wastage and the effect on uh, nutrition as well as climate change. And on the flip side, also, all that must be coming from RBI Mysore. So <laughs> Mysore Connect is there in that also. Uh, we would also love to visit the RBI and see how these uh, nodes look at one place. And uh, thank you also, uh, Sri Lab, for your uh, wonderful uh, comments. Uh, one thing I will add, whatever you are seeing the node, node is printed in a form of sheet. Hello, Chief. Actually, note is printed, not a single piece. It is printed in 50 notes at a seat. So I think uh, all are knowing or not, I don't know. So that I will mention. Thank you. So also, you mentioned about the policy. And I think all of our food in the, uh, institutes have to work together in collaboration to find solutions. And I think that is a great uh, uh, move forward. The greatest asset of any organization is its people. I thank all the retirees who were gracious to accept and come here today. Thank you for the service that has been rendered to the institute. 
CSAR has always looked after the community of uh, employees as well as the families. And it is a testimony that uh, nobody quits CSAR after joining. So many of you have put in more than two or three decades of uh, work here and uh, contributed towards uh, making the institute what it is t uh, today as well as uh, CSAR. So thank you. Today we also honor uh, all our employees who are still in service but have completed uh, 25 years of uh, service. And uh, we, I thank uh, them also for all the services rendered. Probably they will be getting their memento now, I think. Uh, so uh, thank you all. Thank you. Continuing with the felicitation of the retirees of year 2021, I request Director Ma'am to facil felicitate Shri Prasad T, the retiree of 2020. Thank you, ma'am. Now is the time to present the mementos to those employees who have successfully completed 25 years of qualifying service at this institute in the years 2021 and 2021-22. May I request the chief guest, Dr. Vasudevappa, to present the mementos, please. Dignitaries may also please join them. I begin with the employees of year 2021. I call upon Dr. Atar Singh Chauhan to come on the stage and receive the memento, please. Shri Hemaraju R. Shri Puttaswami. Shri Rajamallu M. Shri Puttaswami. Shri Rajamallu M. Shri Ramesh, yes. Shri Ramesh, yes. And Dr. Revati Baskaran. Dr. Revati Baskaran. The employees who receive the mementos may please come up on the stage for the group photo. Now we shall continue with the employees of 21-22. Srimati Chanchala Kumari N. Dr. 
डॉक्टर उषा धर्मराज डॉक्टर उषा धर्मराज श्रीमती वनजाक्षी वी श्रीमती वनजाक्षी वी श्री अरुण कुमार श्री अरुण कुमार श्री कृष्णया एच ई डॉक्टर उमेश हेब्बार श्रीमती श्री विद्या डॉक्टर भास्कर एन डॉक्टर भास्कर एन डॉक्टर प्रदीप सिंह नेगी डॉक्टर प्रदीप सिंह नेगी श्री संतोष जी डॉक्टर भास्कर एन श्री संतोष जी श्री लॉरेंस ए श्री शिवा आर श्री शिवा आर श्री सो श्रीमती सोमलता बी श्री नटराजा सी श्री नटराजा सी श्री विजय प्रसाद राजू डॉक्टर नरसिंह राव डॉक्टर नरसिंह राव डॉक्टर बाबा साहेब भास्कर राव बोरसे डॉक्टर मीरा एम एस डॉक्टर मीरा एम एस डॉक्टर सुकुमार देवनाथ डॉक्टर सुकुमार देवनाथ डॉक्टर कुड़चिकर बीबी डॉक्टर कुड़चिकर बीबी and dr kumar b dr kumar b 
the employees may join for the group photo session. Congratulations once again to everyone. We have almost come to the end of this celebrations of two celebrations. May I now request Srimati Savita to propose the vote of thanks. I take this opportunity to thank one and all for being present on the occasion of CSIR Foundation Day 2022. It's time to thank the Chief Guest, Dr. Chindi Vasudevappa, Vice Chancellor, Niftem Haryana, for sparing his valuable time and gracing this occasion. Thank you, sir. May I request Director Ma'am to honor the Chief Guest, Dr. Vasudevappa, with Mysore Peta as a gesture of Mysore tradition, a shawl, and present the memento as a token of appreciation, please. Thank you, ma'am. I thank the guest of honor, Sri R.K. Lab, Senior General Manager, Bharatiya Reserve Bank, Note Mudran Private Limited, for being with us and presenting the mementos to the students who are apparently the wards of our employees. Thank you, sir. Now I request Director Ma'am to honor Sri R.K. Lab with Mysore Peta, a shawl, and present the memento as a token of appreciation. I would thank our Director Ma'am, Dr. Sri Devi Anapurna Singh for being the guide and encouraging spirit for the occasion. Thank you, Ma'am. I further extend my thanks to our employees for encouraging their children to participate in the competitions conducted in this institute as a part of the CSIR Foundation Day celebrations. I thank each and everyone who have contributed towards making this function a grand success. Sri Satish H.S., Chief Scientist and Head, Department of Meat and Marine Science, Sri Satyendra Rao B.V., Chief Scientist and Head, Department of Technology, Transfer Business Development. Dr. Sri Rama Vayan, Chief Scientist and Head, Department of Planning, Monitoring and Coordination. Controller of Administration, Sri Somnath Majumdar, for taking the initiative in organizing the function. My dear colleagues and staff of E6, Transport Department and E7 section for all their support and cooperation at every stage. Administration, finance and accounts, stores and purchase for being the support system all the time. All the committee members for their valuable contribution in various organized activities. The departments of ITS and CS, PMC, INP, Agri-Horticulture, Civil, Electrical and Security. 
Shri Punil Kumar for coordinating in various activities and last but not the least departmental canteen staff and departmental canteen chairman Dr. Kuruchikar VP and guest house in charge Mr. Satish for their coordination. I thank our retirees for attending this function who have served for this organization in achieving the goals and objectives of CSIR CFTRI. I thank all the employees present here and students for your participation in the program which has eventually made this function a grand success. At the end of my talk, alongside thanking everyone, I wish you all a very happy and safe Diwali. Now I request the gathering to stand up for the national anthem which would be played shortly. Thank you one and all. See you next year.